The Adobe Max conference was this week and it's always exciting to see what Adobe is coming up with next and what new features will be useful for fashion designers. So here's my take. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham and I discuss digital fashion software and communication on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. As I mentioned, I was pretty excited about the upcoming conference. And as usual, Adobe delivered some great updates to their various software. I have to say though, I was a little less than thrilled with the updates to Illustrator and Photoshop, which are the two main Adobe programs that fashion designers make use of. But I did find one new tool that could prove helpful for some things. My first thought is for accessories, in particular a chain link. I made this video previously using one technique, but I think this new tool will make it a little easier. The tool is called Intertwine and here's how it works. I'm going to start by creating a ring using two aligned ovals and then making them into a compound path. I'm also going to color the rings with a metallic gold gradient. Then I'm going to drag a copy of the ring and overlap it where I want the rings to link. In my previous video, I used the Shape Builder tool to make the rings look like they're interlocking. And that technique still works and is still an effective way to do this. But with the new Intertwine tool, you can do this with one less step. Select the two rings, go to the Object menu, and choose Intertwine Make. Your cursor turns into a lasso tool, which you can use to circle the area you want to intertwine. Deselect and your rings are now interlocking. So this is a pretty cool feature and I know I've needed something like this for other things besides interlocking rings, but that was really all I could think of right now, which honestly makes me feel like this is a cool feature, but it's really not lending any extra pizzazz or efficiency to the tools I'm already using. There were some other features that were introduced that are helpful. One is definitely great for fashion freelancers who work with their clients remotely or need to send or email work to get feedback. They added a share for review tool right in the program, which I think is very helpful. It allows you to automatically send collaborators an email when you need feedback. And all the feedback is in one place, right in Illustrator and attached to the document, which is great. So you don't have to go hunting down emails when you're looking for comments on something to make your updates. Also, for any of you who use InDesign with Illustrator, you can now easily copy and paste between the two programs. And having used InDesign in the past, that can be helpful. They also made some updates if you're using 3D. But honestly, if you're really serious about 3D fashion design, you need to look into learning Browseware or Clo. Adobe isn't there yet with fashion, and I'm not sure they ever will be, to be honest, at least not on the level that these other programs are. Substance can be incorporated with both Browseware and Clo to create fabrics and textures, but to create 3D garments, Adobe is not the program for that. So overall, the conference was cool, but I was a little underwhelmed this year. And I mean, that's going to happen considering this company and their software isn't really made for fashion designers anyway, so it's fine. The silver lining for me is that my Illustrator for Fashion Design Level 1 course didn't need any updating. So as of now, the tools and techniques currently demonstrated in the course are still the most relevant and efficient. Thanks for watching today's video. If you want to sign up for that Illustrator for Fashion Design Level 1 course, make sure you tap the link in the description for instant access. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.